great conversations. We had some great conversations yesterday. We've got more where that came from today. We're going to kick it off in a very special way here today because this first panel is called Wrestling for the Culture. And I'm not going to be hosting it, but I'm going to bring out our guests and I'm going to bring out our special guest host at this time. So let me bring out our special guest first. This man hails from Brooklyn, New York. He's an author of three books, including a fitness book that was published this past December. He appeared in the final Sharknado film, and he is the founder of Sexy as Hell Beard Care. All you bearded fellows need to go check him out. He was an OVW Southern Tag Team Champion alongside his partner Shad Gaspar. He just made his NWA debut and is a former WWE superstar and one half of the tag team known as Crime Time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome JTG, J the Yo, 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 yo. Pop a 40 and check your rollies. It's Crime Time. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. That's not all, ladies and gentlemen. He is not going to be out here alone. Our next guest hails from Baltimore, Maryland. He is a former WWE superstar and cruiserweight champion. He is a former Impact Wrestling X Division champion, and he is the third African American world champion in Impact Wrestling history. He's the man who united the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and the Impact World Championship. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce you to Impact Wrestling Superstar, Rich Swan. Noise. 
let's start this thing off hot. We, I, I know y'all get louder now. We got two of the most influential brothers from our culture making a name for themselves right now. Let's give it up again for JTG and Rich Swan. Let's go. Alright, so let, let's get this Q&A started, man. JTG. What's good, player? The VIP champion out there in Texas, man. Let's go. So let's start off, man. So, you grew up in Brooklyn. Black Bush. Black Bush. All right. So, what made you get into the world of professional wrestling? Oh man, my, my both my parents were big wrestling fans. Um, my mom especially, she would take me and my sister to Madison Square Garden every month. When it started, I wasn't even born yet. She was taking me when she was pregnant. And I just posted on my social media, uh, I think about a week or two weeks ago, my first uh, wrestling event. It was in 1985. I wasn't even one yet, but I was uh, watching King Kong Bundy and Andre the Giant go at it, and I was I was just a couple of months, and it's just been a tradition. I've been going when they ran uh, New York City. They would come once a month, and I would me, my mom, and my sister was there. <laughs> How about the Knicks this season, though, man? They did it. Yeah, they're doing alright. I don't keep it. I don't keep up with it. Dude, just got eliminated out of the playoffs, but y'all did y'all. Y'all finally made it back to the playoffs. So I give you that respect. So hey, so Rich, you started early in your career at a young age. All right, we got Eli Knight here who started at a young age too in our group. So he's gonna ask you questions to you. Yeah, I can. I can ask the same thing. Uh, he asked Jason G. Uh, what got you started into wrestling? You know, just my brother. He was a huge, huge wrestling fan and. Uh, I just remember as a young kid, I was at home watching the Go Go Power Rangers. <laughs> and my brother, he came and he said, get that crap off, I got something else you need to watch. Yeah. And I said, well what? What could, what could be better than the Power Rangers? He put on WCW Monday Nitro. Oh. Next thing I knew, I was seeing guys like Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, the Malenko fly around doing all these things that the Power Rangers could do, but they was real. God damn! So I said, you know what, this is something that I want to do. This is something that, you know, these guys, especially Rey Mysterio, being his size and stature, I was never a big kid. I was always the small kid, the little run of the grunge. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just seeing somebody like Rey gave me hope and inspiration, and that's why I do what I do today. JTG, quick question for you. So, so a lot of people here may not know the strenuous training we go through. Yeah, could you happen to give a glimpse at your training in OVW? Oh man, so I started training in OVW when I was 19 years old, and um, I started out with like 30, 40 people, and by the end of the month, it was probably like. <laughs> <laughs> like 10, 15 of us. They, in the wrestling business, they have a, a way of weeding out the weak, weeding out the ones who, you know, who really want it, not someone who just watched it on TV and, oh, I'm gonna get in the ring. You know, we went through strenuous training, you know, we did a, a 100 to 500 uh, uh, squats, yeah, uh, hitting the ropes a uh, 100 times, you know, I remember going home for training sometime, you know, I have like little welts from the ropes. Uh, under my under my arm, and I, I just developed a uh, what you call it? Callus. It's, it's like it's, it's, uh, a callus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the little hard spot right yeah, there. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, I don't got those bruises anymore. But yeah, the, the training is very strenuous. You have to really be passionate about the world of professional wrestling to get into it. It's not for the weak of heart. For anybody who's thinking about getting into professional wrestling. You have to come in, you could, you could be physically fit, but you have to have the heart, the passion for it. Appreciate it, that's real, that's real. So JTG, you were one half of the illustrious tag team, Primetime, that I know everybody in here believes needs to be in the Hall of Fame coming soon, right? Make some noise and shout out to Asphalt again. So, so my question is, you and Shad, early 2000s, y'all came to WWE. I want to know how was it doing those entertaining skits? Because I got one in particular that you and Shad were selling D-Generation Next 
some scalpel tickets to get back into Raw, man. How was filming those entertaining skits like? Those skits were very entertaining to to um to film. I, I remember when we got the script. Well, not the script because they couldn't really write for Chad and I. Yeah. We kind of just gave us bullet points of what it, what they wanted us to do. But um, like the vignettes, we came up with a lot of our, our vignettes and skits. I, I remember our um, our debut skits, the vignettes. Chad and I came up with all those ideas, and uh, we did it in OVW. And Vince got hold of it, saw it. Hired me immediately. He's like, I love these guys' uh, on-screen chemistry. They have something I wanted on my brand. And I got called up. Um, Chad and I got called up. And then we went up to WWE. Um, they ran a lot of ideas by us, but we had to, because yeah. it had to be uh, street approved. It had to be approved by, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember one time one of the writers came to Chad and I, and he wanted us to say Molly Walked. Chad and I looked at each other like, what's a Molly Wap? You're not, you're not saying that. Where did you get Molly Wap from? Oh, we looked at the, um, what's it called? The Urban, the Urban Dictionary. I'm like, oh, that's where you messed up. <laughs> Man, okay. All right, Rich, so you just had probably one or maybe the biggest match of your career. You walked into Impact Rebellion, and you're going one-on-one -on -one with one of the greatest performers of this generation. Kenny Omega, and you're walking in there as the Impact World Champion. Tell us how it was going into that match and your preparation for that match. You know, every single day I was just getting ready for the best bout machine, getting that cardio up, making sure I was in the gym, uh, just working as hard as I could, you know what I'm saying? And everything that they say about Kenny Omega is true. He is the best bout machine. He is one of the people that is an inspiration to the people coming up watching this game, and he's a game changer. And uh, getting in the ring with them at Rebellion, I definitely found out what Kenny Omega was made of. We went 30 plus minutes, and uh, so man, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was definitely one of the toughest matches of my life. It had a whole bunch of pressure, you know, uh, built up with it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I came in as the Impact World Champion and the TNA World Champion, yes. you know, and I had that match with Moose, and yes. Moose, he's one hell of a competitor, former NFL star, uh, it, it's just ridiculous, it's a lot, almost seven feet tall, you know what I'm saying, and the match, compared to the Kenny match, it doesn't even, you know, uh, put into words the exhaustion, you know, that I felt, you know, in that match, like, Kenny and I, we put everything that we had into it because it was built as you know two different wrestling promotions on two different television stations stepping into one ring on one pay-per-view no screwy finishes no bs like we was just going out there and we was going to give a winner and you know everybody saw who the winner came out to be and that was kenny but you know what i feel like i proved myself hell yeah you did hell yeah you did All those wrestlers that you, you stepped in the ring with, and you guys killed it every single time. So. It was, it was definitely something that uh, I hold near and dear to my heart. Like I'll never ever, you know, forget those days. Like traveling to Mexico, traveling to Germany, traveling to England, traveling to Japan, and every single one of those places, every single one of those countries that I've been to, you take something different learn something different. You always will learn something new every single time you step into a new place, every single time you step into a ring. And the moment that you think that you know it all is the moment that you need to step away from the business because you will never, ever, ever stop learning. And that's the one thing that, you know, I have kept instilled in me is to always go out and learn something new every single time I am blessed to step into a professional wrestling ring. You know, you know, speaking about PWG, we know that it's coming back August 1st. So, you got any plans or? Hey, uh -oh. Just uh -oh. keep their eyes peeled. You might see me in a battle of Los Angeles or something like that, you never know. 
gotta stay woke. You gotta stay, stay woke. woke. <laughs> you know so JTG back to, like I said, one of the best illustrious tag team in all of WWE. You and Shad, take us back to 2008 when you and Shad worked with John Cena. Tell us how that was when y'all was tearing up JBL's limousine on Monday Night Raw. How was it working with John Cena? I'll never forget that day. Uh, it was New Orleans. It was July 7th, <laughs> 2008. And it caught us off guard because we had no idea. We just walked into the building and one of the um, uh, backstage hands was like, oh, you guys are going to make history tonight. I'm like, oh, we win the title. It's great. <laughs> and they were like, when we got the info, they were like, oh, we, um, you, guys, you guys are going with John Cena. We guys are going to have you as a pair. I mean, she looked at each other like, oh, we with the big dog. We with, <laughs> we with, we with John. And we always had a cool relationship with John. He was cool. And I think there was definitely something there. I wish that we could have done a lot more. You know, I think we only gave you guys a little taste of uh, CTC. <laughs> to piggyback off of that, like I said, we've been fans of yours for years, man. You were in rich respect. You guys make me feel old. Hey, man. So there was another match that I remember distinctly on SmackDown. I want to say 2009-ish. I want you to take us back, and I feel like it was, a, it was one of the head matches. It was JTG versus the GOAT, Y2J, Chris Jericho himself. Tell us how that match ended, and tell us how your hair was going into that match. That also caught me off guard, too. Okay. I remember the building. I was walking into, uh, I believe it was in um, Nassau, somewhere in, yeah, Nassau. And I walked into the building. Jericho hits me, tapped me over my shoulder. Me and you, kid, you up. And I'm like, I can't curse it. I'm like, got it here. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't believe, I thought he was messing with me. And then I, some hours went and I saw the card, and I actually, and I was working him, and also I was winning. And to, also to top it off, my mom being such a big wrestling fan, and you know, taking me, she was able to sit front row and watch her son beat Y2J. Yeah. That, and her friends was there. She was. You could, if you look back, you can see her front row, and that's also on my social media. Yeah. I pointed out my mom, and she was so happy and proud to see her, her son, her, what she would watch growing up when she came to this country, because she was an immigrant when she came to this country and latched on to wrestling to see her son perform in the in the ring with white two J. Yeah. So, like I said, with with this collection of black excellence in this room right now, with us brothers coming up in this business of color. How did y'all approach that? Did y'all ever face any negativity? Did you ever face any any struggles, any any criticism in certain aspects? What kind of advice would you give three brothers up and coming in this business of how we should handle adversity like that if we were to approach something like that? You know, I'd say, you know, just go in and don't use it as a crutch. You know, we've all dealt through negative in our life, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've dealt with adversity from the age of 15 years old, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have a mother or a father, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I've just learned to deal with adversity. When you go in and you look adversity right in the face, you know what I'm saying? And you take what's yours. You do it respectfully, though. And I'd say, as a, as a brother, you know what I'm saying? You go through and you just go through and then bust your ass just like, oh, I excuse my language, but you just go through and you just you just work as hard as you can, harder than the next man to, to get with yours and, and earn respect and everything like that. And just come with respect, that's all that's it. Just follow up with what he said. Give it to y'all. Just give it y'all. Don't focus on the negativity. Stay positive. Um, I'm, a, I'm big into spirituality, so I don't focus on negativity because when you focus on it, it's like a magnet. It's gonna, you're just going to attract it. So stay positive um, and just give it your all. Just give it your all. When I first started uh, started out with professional wrestling, I was watching tapes from the 80s and 70s. I was working on my promos. I was practicing my punches on the walls, busting up my knuckles because I wanted to throw the best punch in my class. And look where it got me. <laughs> Right. So for all y'all fans right here in attendance, listen, this is the time where we gonna get y'all involved in this Q&A. So everybody out here, let's make some noise. We finna come out there and get a fan question. So everybody get up, we finna go to the loudest fan, and y'all finna ask JTG and Rich Swart a personal question. Malik, find the loudest fan for us. Personal. Real quick. 
myself there was 32 other competitors that also got an opportunity to step into the world wrestling entertainment and you know hone their skills and show the world what they could do and uh, I felt very fortunate and grateful to be able to put cruiserweight wrestling back on the map and you know it was definitely yeah, an you amazing did. experience thank you thank you We, we actually have one more question over here. I think we have a question for Culture Ray. What's going on, guys? I got a question for y'all young guys in the business. Uh, for the culture guys. 
do you feel like you owe a responsibility to the business and to represent uh, the culture, if you will, uh, to the future of pro wrestling? Everybody give it up for the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Give it up for the, hey, from our culture to you, Mark Henry. Happy belated birthday, my brother. Happy birthday. Man, we just got a question from Mark Henry. So to answer your question, to answer your question, for us, when you got such good examples of God that trail, like blazed the one hell of a trail in front of us, as you, like Ron Simmons, Mark Henry, Butch Reed, all y'all brothers, man. So, Shag Ass Bar, all y'all brothers, we feel an obligation to do right by y'all. We feel an obligation to put other fans onto our culture. If it's wrestling, if it's sitcom, if it's music, if it's political stuff, if it's Black Lives Matter movement, if it's any of that, we feel an obligation to do right by you, the legends, the OGs, that blazed the trail that we walk today in tag team wrestling, Olympic wrestling, gold medals, all that stuff. You blaze the trail for Crime Time, you blaze the trail for Rich Swan, you blaze the trail for us on the independent scene, Coach E. We, we feel an obligation to go out there and show people what the coach is all about. If it's like, like I said, for the African American brothers, for any other color that it is, we, we, we feel an obligation to put it on for all of y'all in 100%. Eli, you, like, you got it. I'm only 19, so learning all about just like what black people have been through, the struggles we go through at a young age, you have to you have to realize that we have a responsibility. We have to look at just everything black that we have to just do right for the brothers and sisters in front of us. That's it. That's it. I know. I know. I know. Our responsibility is to everybody because inside, outside this business, inside, outside this ring, we have to show them 100%. We can't show them anything less. We can't give no reason for them to look at us any less than everybody else. So no matter what it is that we do inside, outside the ring, 100% we will give for our obligation. So like I said, with, with, the, with the coaching, our duty and obligation as a tag team, represented for the state of Florida, <laughs> is to go out and keep our message alive. Like I said, with the Black Lives Matter. With that, also for our brothers of color, like I said, like putting a spotlight on brothers like Mark Henry, Ron Simmons, Butch Reed, and rest in peace to Kamala, rest in peace to Viscera, all those brothers that blaze the trail that we walk today, is, is a, we, we're doing it for the culture. And we're doing it for each and one of y'all. We're doing it for Jacksonville. We're doing it for Orlando. We're doing it for Tampa. And like I said, we're doing it for like the brothers in front of us right here. Rich One, JTG. We're doing it for all y'all. And like I said, a message that we're going to take off of today is to stay woke. Because the future is all of ours here in this business. And be well the culture. God bless you all. Thank y'all for today. Give it up one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for the Wrestling for the Culture panel opening things up today and day two of the River City Wrestling Con. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're gonna take about five minutes, and we got another panel coming in there. I'm going to be joined by three very special guests. I'm going to keep it under my hat for a minute. You got to sit there. You got to wait. We're going to let you know in about five minutes, folks.